Nevada is to New England, gumbo is to Louisiana, and of course Houston. All kinds of things can go into it, but first you have to master the rules of the rue. Gumbo is so rich in culture that it actually has its own movie. Did you hear me? It has its own movie, yes. All right, Alisa Rochelle is the director of the movie Gumbo. She's also uh, joined by Timothy Malcolm, dining editor with the Houstonia Magazine, Chef Ryan Savoy, St. Arnold's Brewing, and Chef Manny Viveros with Rue Pour. Hello there. because I can think of all kinds of things a movie can be made of. Right. But you like decided, okay, let's make a movie about gumbo. Yes, so I did. Gumbo. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> How'd that come about? Now, actually, at the time, I didn't know how to make gumbo. I grew up eating gumbo, um, being from Port Arthur with family from Louisiana. Mm -hmm. I grew up eating it. My mom knows how to make it. My grandma makes it. So I never wanted to try to make it because it's so complex. Right. And so I said, well, I want to shoot my grandmother teaching me. I want to shoot my husband's uncle teaching him. And so I thought, well, where does it come from? Do other people make it differently? And before you do it, there's a documentary there, Absolutely. right? Because it's all research. kinds of great information. So much. All right, so you hit the ground running, yes. and you decided you had to go kind of to you know, ground zero, Louisiana. Absolutely. I went to New York area, New Orleans, uh, also South Carolina, and of course Houston, mm -hmm. and put out there. Okay, as a food editor, uh, there are certain foods that just when you say the word, like watch, what is going to happen right now, watch. Gumbo. <laughs> yeah, see, yeah, okay. Uh, it, it, it's just, there's so much more to it, right? Yeah. And then when you when you say gumbo, you have to ask yourself a lot of questions, like the dark roux, the light roux, yeah. like what's in your gumbo, right? Yeah, there's so much. I mean, you can have a thick roux, you can have a thinner roux, a brown roux, you can do seafood gumbo, you can do chicken and sausage gumbo, of course, okra, you know, some gumbos will have okra, some will have tomatoes, some gumbos have tomatoes, yeah. and some don't. You really kind of, it, it, it just, the whole world of gumbo is so vast, and yet it's such a regional cuisine. And it dates back maybe 200 years or so, Absolutely. and it's this, it's this really great, you know, comfort food of the Gulf, and yet it can really span a whole different kind of, you know, ingredients yeah. and flavors. And I love that when you talk about the regional thing, as much as it is called gumbo overall, mm -hmm. uh, if you were inland, you didn't have the seafood in there because you right. couldn't get it there, right? right? Of course, when you're on the coast, then you have the seafood there. Okay, so I'm going to ask you, uh, Manny, to gumbo or to okra or to not okra? We don't do any okra. No okra. No okra. It's because you just don't like okra? No, because our gumbo, it's, um, it's a little different, mm -hmm. you know? Like he was saying, it's um, it's really open to different ingredients, yeah. you know? And our gumbo, we don't put okra, but we... What do you have against okra, Manny? <laughs> I love okra. I do love okra. I love okra. But it speaks to, again, the things that you can put in it. And some yeah. things that aren't so common, for example, being at St. Arnold's, you're throwing a little... Oh, we've got our beer in there, for yeah, sure. Yes, yeah, yes. You can drink and eat all at the same time. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Uh, speaking of St. Arnold's, we've known as a brewery for a long time, but not long ago, opened up a restaurant as well. Yeah, we've been open for about uh, seven months now. We've we've had food in the in the older facility uh, going on about six years now. Mm -hmm. I've worked for them for six years. Uh, but our newer facility uh, just opened about six, seven months ago, and it's been going great. Yeah, and as we say with the, with the gumbo, you do what's kind of regional and local and around you. Uh, you we see that in the beers too. Oh, for sure. Yeah, oh, yeah. We're oh. very, very Texas centric with a lot of the things that we make. All right, Manny, what's in this gumbo that we have in front of us? Well, this gumbo we use uh, jalapeno sausage and instead of okra. Not gonna eat. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> and also we have a gulf shrimp mm. and jumbo long crab meat. Okay. And you're gonna you're gonna taste the little. Okay. Spice to it because mm -hmm. we have cayenne pepper in there mm -hmm. and plus the jalapeno sausage that give that extra kick in the gumbo. This is so good. Okay, so in doing your documentary, mm -hmm. the battles that we talked about, okra versus no okra, right. uh, what did you find? It's a mix, and you have some people that truly believe that it's not gumbo unless you have okra in it. Mm -hmm. Because as we found and as we know, that um, gumbo gets its name derived from Africa, mm -hmm. meaning okra. Mm -hmm. So some people believe well, it's not. Gumbo 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 gumbo. Yeah, some people like I didn't grow up with okra and mine gumbo either. So I truly believe it's a preference. But there are some people who truly really know it has to be okra. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. And there's that whole storyline because they believe that, like with black eyed peas, same thing that um, not indigenous to the United States, right? And right. it came over the scenes of, of uh, clothing of slaves. The right. scenes came over, and that's how kind of okra came about. Exactly. The whole bit. All right, dark roux, light roux. I think the darker the roux, you know. <laughs> I grew up with the darker room. Yeah. Yeah. And then there are people who say, you know, they look at the color of the gumbo to say if it's really gumbo or if they're going to eat it or not. But I've, I've joined this documentary, I've had gumbo with lighter room. Mm -hmm. Not too light, but like a caramel brown color mm -hmm. or a darker room. And it still tastes good. Yeah. And we have a, an example of a lighter room over here. 
And then, of course, one that's just the chicken and sausage and the one that's the um, seafood involved in there as well. Okay. That was just so good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You, uh, you also interviewed several chefs and people who and have some roots as well. You met one woman who yes. is pretty amazing. And she's, uh, what's her name, Dookie Chase? Dookie Chase, Chase Russian. Russian. Yeah. Yeah. Leah Chase in uh -huh. New Orleans. She's definitely a person that everyone says you have to interview. She's uh, on nine, just turned 96 years old and been um, the staple, like a Creole legend mm -hmm. in New Orleans. She also, almost invented gumbo. Absolutely, a very good gumbo. Mm -hmm. um, and hers is actually called color. She always says that the root has to be the color of her skin, which is called brown skin, okay. no darker. Um, she also uh, also interviewed Marcus Davis here of the Breakfast Club and Culture, mm -hmm. and also Serene Mbe from West Africa, similarly chef in New Orleans. Yeah, so, so you, you combine those kind of those African roots absolutely. of what, kind of how things change when they cross the ocean. Absolutely. And again, dealing with things that are local. Okay, so the Creole, Cajun type of food. Okay, when we come back, we're going to stew over this a bit more. Okra, no okra, we talked about all that stuff, but the best of the best will win this right here in the okra gumbo smackdown. <laughs>